Right, former TV and radio broadcast journalist Tracy Going has now added author to her list of accolades after the release of her debut memoir entitled Brutal Legacy. The book gives the reader a vivid account of Tracy's abusive relationship that made headlines across the nation in the 90s. More than two decades after the incident occurred, she has uh, grippingly documented her journey in an effort to highlight issues surrounding women abuse and how easy it is to be in an abusive relationship and not even know it. We now welcome back Tracy Going to Morning Live. Tracy, how are you? Thank you, Leanne. It's lovely to be sitting here. I think we obviously were thinking the same when we got up this morning and put our flowers on. I actually giggled when I saw your shirts. I said, "All right, so I'll wear the red and uh, the red and black, and you can wear the black and red." I love it. It's really good. So, I mean, this is—it uh, must be surreal for you to be here. I mean, well, last time I think I think all those years ago, I think we started in the studio. Oh, and did then you? We moved on to reception. I think it was the studio. Okay. But yes, there are a lot of say, uh, familiar faces, yeah, a lot of new nice. faces. Ah, it's well, it's so lovely to see you it really is and, and to have you sitting here in studio but I must say I, that's all, I've only been reading about you lately and and I've discovered that I knew nothing about your life oh wow wow I mean this is this is a very moving moving story it really is and so beautifully written and I'm shocked to hear that you have never written before this is never the first hand at it yeah and um, I must say it's a it was a torturous undertaking it's a lot of hard work writing a book I didn't realize how much hard work it was yeah. but um, so I'm glad it's it sort of got to the end um, I knew it where, I knew where it started and I knew where it ended yeah. so so that part was easy um, it's the it missing going pieces back, in between yeah you know, it was sort of going back and remembering I think I've always known I, I've always known I was going to write a book one day mm. but um, I think healing is a process I could have written the book 10 years ago it would have been a completely different book um, and, and now I felt it was time. And I think it was really the Oscar Pistorius trial. And then we've seen that subsequently all these high profile murders, you know, um, um, we've seen Jade, we've seen Susan Roder, we've just had Jill Packham in Cape Town, we've got Karabo Mukwena, you mm -hmm. know, all these women being murdered. And, and it, it's just, it just really was time to speak out. Yeah, which is, which is good because, you know, you, you tend to look at somebody and think, no, but they're perfect. They live the perfect life. And even though I, mean, I, I know at the time, I mean, your face was published all over newspapers and it was something that, you know, people were devastated to see and think, but somebody on television, somebody on radio, there's no way this can happen to well, you. I also thought I was living my perfect life. I mean, I was living the life I wanted to live and I was completely taken aback that I ended up in an abusive relationship and I can't believe I mean I still can't believe that I was in one and but it was a relationship where I, I dated him for five months and the first bruises I saw was when I got a restraining order oh. so I and then of course three weeks later he came and beat me up um, yeah yeah. You know, I, a question I have to ask you, and I mean, it's something that I've always been told. I mean, I, I thank God a million times that I, that I haven't been in an abusive situation. I haven't, so I can't speak from experience. But you grew up with a father who was abusive. Yeah, I think, I think if I hadn't shared that part of my life in the book, um, the story wouldn't have had the layers that it has. Yeah. Because I think where we come from often defines where we're going or certainly influences where we're going. So growing up in a home where there was domestic violence, I mean, you know, very often the pattern is repeated and it was something that I decided as a child would never happen to me and then yeah. it did happen to me. Yeah. So um, I had to go back and I had to explore that part as well because I think often if you come from a home of, of, of abuse or violence or uncertainty or a lot of trauma, um, perhaps your ability to judge other people are a little bit skewered. You know, your sense of normal is a little different yeah. from people who've grown up in a safe environment. Um, so possibly, I mean, I still don't even know after even having written a book and after all these years whether it was inevitable. Mm. I mean, because that, that is a question that I think I grapple with and a lot of people do because you find that somebody that does grow up in, a, in an abusive environment finds themselves going for the same later on in life. Perhaps you find your comfort there. But I, I, I can't reason with that. Yeah. Is there any rationality in a theory like that? I think so. I was reading something the other day, and I thought it was such an al a lovely analogy. It was about um, it was about post traumatic stress, and you know, and they were trying to explain how it affects you on a molecular level almost. So the, the example they used was going out into the wild, and a lion comes along, and um, and that fear that you feel in your eyes dilate and you break out in a cold sweat and that. Um, and, and we can all sort of relate to that, that part because we know how we would all react if we had to see a lion in the wild. Yeah. And then sort of the article went on to say, so for people who live in a home of abuse, the lion comes home at night. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think when you grow up in an environment like that, I, I do think your sense of what is normal and not normal is skewered. Yeah. 
I mean, you talk about in the, the beginning of the book how you would lie in bed at night and you'd wait for that father of yours to arrive home and you would never know what state he'd be in. And well, you're always on high alert. You're always gauging, you know, is he, is he sober, easy. is he not sober? What type yeah. of night are we going to have tonight? Yeah. Um, yeah. So certainly I, I sort of had to include it in the book. I think it did. I mean, I mean that, that, that sort of, it, it opened my eyes and put a lot into perspective for me. But, you know, what's, what's wonderful about this is that it is quite cathartic, isn't it, to be able to document your story and to bring it full circle. Well, I think has it helped you? Yeah, it has, Leanne, enormously. Um, I, I mean, there were times where I really had to walk away for two, three weeks when I was writing, especially when I was going through the court transcripts. I was beaten up. To me, it was a natural process. You go to the police, you report it, you go to court. I mean, that was just the way it's supposed to happen, really. Yeah. I never foresaw, first of all, the media coverage, and I, and I certainly never saw, foresaw the violation that would happen in the courtroom. And um, so the booking is, a, is very much a large part of what happens in the court case. And I sat with the court transcripts next to me as I wrote that, you know, those chapters. And just going back and seeing how I was belittled and um, humiliated in the courtroom and accused of lying um, and exaggerating and yeah. made into this, this picture, they paint a picture of you as a volatile woman, um, a bad mother. I mean, everything that could have been thrown at me was thrown at me as the defence what I call played their game of trying to keep the perpetrator out of jail. So they lost, you know, they went out guns blazing um, with no regard for the fact that there is somebody and their child, me and my child, at the receiving end of all of that. Yeah. So having to go back into that darkness was um, debilitating. And I, as I said, I did have to walk away for quite I'm a bit sure. of time. I mean, I mean, it took a year to write the book. Opening doors that you've closed in your mind yeah. that you don't want to go through again because that, 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 that door is closed the key's been thrown away and now you're unlocking it. And I think you, by human nature, Leanne, is we, 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 um, we try and forget trauma. We yeah. put it away. So to write, and I understand now why people write journals, to write is to remember yeah. and possibly put in perspective. You well, know? listen, you found a talent that I, I think is just <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, you, there was one line that jumped up on when, when you went to your dad's funeral and you said... Um, because he was such a heavy drinker, you, you, at the age of 52, you buried your dad and you wrote here, I gave up on him long before his body did. Yeah. And that just, it, it just, it, I don't know, it resonated with me. And these are the kind of lines that you throw out, which are amazing. There's another point in this book that you make is that you kind of ignored the signs. They were there all along yeah. that this man yeah. was an abusive man. You ignored them and you didn't want to. But how can women look for those well, signs? Well, I think... It, I, and that's, that is why I put them in the book, was I want to show that the signs are there. Um, the bad behavior is there. The pattern of behavior is there. And we do excuse it. Um, we do make excuses for what happens. You know? And it does start with the dog being kicked, the doors being slammed, the underlying threat is you're next. Mm -hmm. and, and then eventually you are next. And that's what's frightening. Um, this book, it's just gone onto the bookshelves. It's already uh, in probably just uh, bashing on the top five bestsellers. I think it's sitting at number six already, and it only came out last week. It is such a moving story. My worst part of the book, however, was reading about snakes. <laughs> I have snake to growing, tell up, you. growing up in Britain <laughs> on a small holding with lots of snakes. It killed me. The snake part was the most <laughs> difficult for me to read. I mean, there's still, there's still so much to read, but Tracy. What a book, what a writer. Um, I think Tracy has found, I know that you wrote a cookbook for children. <laughs> Never mind a cookbook for children, there are many more stories in this. In fact, I think there's even a movie here, uh, The Brutal <laughs> Legacy, a memoir. Tracy going, you've got to read this, you really do. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I know you're launching it tonight at uh, Exclusive there's Books. There's another right? launch tonight, that's right. At yeah. where is it? Um, in Clearwater, and then on Saturday, Exclusive Books in Nickelway. So please come along. Go for it. Go and listen, go and meet Tracy again, and go and buy this book. Let's take a break. We'll see you after this.